Most loving father, model of parenthood, teach us to become good parents. Teach us what we should teach our children and what we should withhold from them. Help us to listen to them with patience and to answer their questions with kindness. Show us when we should reprove them and when we should praise them. Give us the imagination to enter into their world in order to understand and guide them. Teach us to always love our children, even if we sometimes do not understand them. Grant us all the virtues we need to lead them by word and example in the path of righteousness. And most of all, give us the love we need to nurse their light. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Francis Xavier, pray, pray for, for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Jesus, light of the world, our light shines. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Again, a pleasant morning to everyone, and welcome to the grades 5 and 6 Parents Orientation for school year 2020 to 2021. Again, a pleasant morning to everyone, and welcome to the grades 5 and 6 Parents Orientation for school years 2020 to 2021. I am Ariel Villanueva, a language teacher, and I will be the moderator for today. To formally begin the orientation, let me present to you our school president, Father Aristotle D. of the Society of Jesus. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh... This is a first for all of us to have a pre-enrollment parents orientation and to do it online. So if there are technical difficulties, we beg your indulgence. And um, while the host can mute all, uh, once somebody is speaking, it's very hard to mute one by one. So a reminder, please, for those who don't know yet how to mute themselves, please, uh, look at that icon and mute yourself, no? So that everybody can hear the presentation. I still see a lot of uh, participants who are, uh, whose microphones are not on mute. So having said that, let's go, let's start. I'd like to begin uh, by showing you the teaser of our Savior School e-learning, uh, which was posted on Facebook, but maybe not all have seen. So let's watch this very, very short teaser. <laughs> Huh? Ganyan ang halang halang. Online? Oh, well. Huh? Maghanap ka ng paraan yan. Ang problema. Hindi naman na-fake TV online. There's no audio on the presentation. All right, uh, maybe you didn't hear the audio on that, but never mind. Um, I'd like to proceed. So uh, as we already announced, the mode of instruction, the mode of delivery for Saber School education this coming school year will be the Excel, not Saber School e-learning. And I just want to start by saying that uh, this mode of learning, even if it's very new to us, will still be quite consistent with our six Cs. No, it's just that we will achieve our 60s in a very different way this school year, starting with online education, and then at some point in the school year, shifting to on-site learning. So if you see on the screen, surrounding, surrounding the Excel is our six Cs, competence, conscience, community, compassion, uh, character, etc. And all of these will be achieved in a different way. No competence, 
will will require a lot of uh, online engagement with students and teachers, online assessments, online discussion, etc. And we hope that even in the online setting, we will be able to achieve uh, our other needs. So the Jesuit principles of holistic education, of innovation built on tradition, will still be uh, manifested through our programs this year. Now, I'd, uh, there's a lot to cover this morning. So I'd like to focus on just three institutional concerns that I'd like to address based on all the feedback we've received from you parents through the email uh, correspondence. No? So I'd like to talk about the school calendar, tuition and fees, and the new normal. First, the school calendar. This is already fixed. No? We are starting on July 22 and ending in March. So there are still uh, some parents uh, suggesting that uh, online education is very difficult, that let's just wait to go back to school physically. Let's start in October or November. But uh, we don't see that as a possibility, no? Because learning has to continue, as DepEd Secretary Briones has uh, emphasized so many times. Our game plan is to start with an online trimester from July to early uh, October. And then after that, or close to that, we will assess whether we will be ready to return to school. Now, many of you were asking, what will be the basis for that decision? Who will make the decision? Well, we have to consider a lot of factors. So first of all, there's the Department of Education. In fact, if you look at their pronouncement, they are ready to return physically to school by August 24. But we're being more conservative than that. We're saying that the earliest we will return is in October uh, because our priority will always be health and safety of everybody. Uh, first and foremost, the minors, the students who are in our care. Who else will be part of decision-making? The school council composed of all the assistant principals, principals and top level administrators, the board of trustees, our medical consultants from Cardinal Santos, our alumni doctors, uh, and of course, the local and national government. Now, some of you were saying, well, we shouldn't go back to school until there is a vaccine. Well, that sounds very ideal, but if you read up on the science, uh, there are many viruses for which there are no vaccines after many years of research. So I think waiting for a vaccine First, to be invented. Second, to be made available to everybody, implemented across the board. Waiting for that does not seem realistic. So the decision will be based on a judgment whether health and safety, uh, all the precautionary measures that we will put in place are already adequate uh, for a return to school. Now, even if we return to school, it does not mean a return to the old normal. No, uh, it will be a very different on-site learning environment. For starters, we do not expect that everybody will come to school all at the same time. There will be a staggered schedule. We don't know what that is yet. Is it half day? Is it uh, one week alternating between different grade levels? We don't know yet. We will study that very carefully. But because of the advice that physical distancing is here to stay, for the next several months, then we have to observe that in the learning environment. So we will put that in place along with the usual, what is now usual, wearing of masks, checking temperature at the gates, observing a protocol for those who manifest a fever at the gates or later on. So we will put all of that in place. So that, that is the, the, the school calendar. Uh, I want you to know that we are not going to insist on a physical return to school if it is not safe to do so. If we need to do the whole school year online, we will do it because if health and safety require it. So it will always be about health and safety. But at the same time, recognizing that the social interaction, the face-to-face -face, uh, education is also very important and that we want to be able to to provide that, to our, that, that experience to our students sooner rather than later. Now, Mrs. Cacaccio will say more later, but in my part, I already want to, to tell you that 
um, we cannot run two parallel programs. Some of you are asking, well, what if the school decides to ask the students to go back to school, but we don't feel comfortable, we don't feel safe, we want to stay at home, can we continue with online learning for the rest of the school year? Um, the answer to that is no, because our teachers will all be all hands on deck to deliver the mode of education, the mode of classroom instruction that we agree on institutionally. No, uh, we cannot, we don't have the personnel, the human resources to, that, to have two parallel programs. So Mrs. Cacaccio will say more later, but since that is a recurring question, I thought I'd address it already. No? So that's the first thing, school calendar. Second thing, tuition and fees. First, I'd like to say that uh, I recognize the dire financial straits of everybody. No, that many of uh, our savior families are entrepreneurs, self-employed with their own businesses, and there has been no income for the past two months. It is really a very difficult time. And that is true also for the school. No, we have uh, uh, committed to job security for our faculty and staff uh, without knowing what enrollment will look like. No? Um, their basic pay is assured. Um, we expect a decline in enrollment. No, all the private schools are expecting a decline in enrollment. In fact, you are the grade five and six parents, but some in kinder have already decided that they will just wait it out. It's okay. You know, they haven't started formal education. Waiting one more year uh, won't be such a big deal. So th that will affect the school's budget, the school's uh, finances very, very seriously. No. Now, yesterday, you received a memo with the total tuition and fees that you will be paying uh, this school year. You know? And uh, first, you notice that every grade level has a different amount because of the different activities, different requirements of each grade level. So you really cannot compare last, your, your total amount last year to this year because of the difference in uh, activities, in expectations. You know? Now, I understand the common sense idea among many parents that there should be a bigger reduction because we are not in school for several months. So there will be a big uh, saving on electricity cost. But let me share with you that, you know, after pouring over the budget so many times, um, the percentage of tuition fee that actually goes into electricity is only 4%. No? The, the bulk of our collection of our revenue really goes to salaries and benefits. So it's not really true that the savings in electricity will be so significant that tuition can be reduced so dramatically. In fact, without the tuition fee increase of about 6%, uh, we are constrained to uh, live with uh, increasing electricity costs, even if there is no tuition fee increase. No? And if you notice also, there is an energy fee that is part of your miscellaneous fees, and that is the amount that has been reduced. No? Furthermore, once uh, conditions allow, in the next few weeks, in fact, by June at the latest, the teachers will be coming back to school to work from here because they also have connectivity problems at home, no? And uh, when they return to school, physical distancing also has to be observed. So the big faculty workroom, the big faculty workrooms where we have, where everybody is together, cannot be used as such. We have to spread out all the teachers using all the classrooms with only five or six of them in each room. Now, if it will be possible not to use the aircon, we'll, we'll do that. But I'm not sure that's really possible given the ventilation concerns. No? Now, there are also new expenses for health and safety. I'm so glad that the local government finally took back the requirement that mandatory testing has to be put in place uh, at the expense of the employer. But still, there, there are new expenses uh, related to health and safety that the school has to undertake the setup in the classrooms, the setup in the canteens, you know, all these measures that will ensure the health and safety of all while we are on campus. There is more work, there is new work for teachers. 
I mentioned in the primer that uh, in some instances, we actually need more teachers to assist, to participate, and yet uh, our tuition fees have already been fixed. No? We cannot afford to hire more. So for those who are joining in a bit late, just a reminder again to please put your microphone on mute so as not to disrupt the presentations. Okay, now to continue with tuition and fees, you will get more detailed information during the online enrollment process, like the detailed list of books and supplies and the payment options. What I can add right now is that credit card payment through Amex and other cards will be possible, but it requires dropping by the school when that becomes possible. So probably still in early June. Why can we not do that online? Because the banks will charge us. The bank charges, charges a percentage, which is significant and we cannot afford that, no? So credit card uh, payment will be possible. Installment plan payment will be possible um, uh, either online or on site. And we will announce the details of that. Finally, for my part, the new normal. Um, I just want to say that we are really and we have really entered a new normal, no? And while that idea is already there, I think the details of that uh, we are still learning day by day, no? And that's important to acknowledge. Some of the questions that came in, some of the comments seem to yearn for a return to the old ways, the old set up uh, but you know guarding against viruses is here to stay beyond covid 19. no online education is here to stay when we have long breaks because of the asian summit for the southeast asian games or various natural calamities online education will be the solution no so even after the pandemic uh, we have to get used to this way of learning no and 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 i just want to acknowledge that because there are so many changes required of all of us no i i acknowledge the comment of many parents that that you have to set up a study nook at home many of you have several two or three young children in grade school how are you how are you going to do that how are you going to find uh, the gadgets how will you find the adults who will accompany you the young ones to supervise them. I know these are very real, very raw problems, and we just we just need to find uh, a way, no? Uh, uh, and there's nothing much more, not much more, perhaps that I can say uh, about that, no? But th there are certain concerns, especially in your home environment, that that you you have to to find solutions to. I just want to say that we're here to journey together. The option to st stop schooling for me is not really uh, a good option, not viable, because I, I do believe that learning has to continue. Now we cannot stay home and just play and, and, and while away the time. Uh, we have to make use of the time very, very wisely. And we would like to be here to support all of you. Now we will learn more about the various ways we can do that but we'd like to be here to assist you in this new experience of online education. We all need to survive this year, this school year, and hope for better times when we can uh, return bit by bit to our former experiences of spending a lot of time in the campus. No? But until that time comes, let's journey together, let's support each other, let's work together so that education can continue for our most important stakeholders, which is our young people, no? to, so that we continue to prepare them for, for, for the future. We give them the skills, the holistic education they need uh, to flourish as human beings and as Christians. So thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Father D. Once again, we would like to remind everyone to mute their microphones when someone is presenting. To mute, please click on the microphone icon on the lower left portion of your screen. We also request you not to play with the Zoom apps 
as this may disrupt the presentation. We will pause for a few seconds to relaunch our screen to clear the markings on the screen. At this point, I would like to invite Mrs. Jane Cacaccio, our grade school principal, to tell us more about what is in store for everyone this school year. Good morning. Can you hear me? Can we see on the chat? Yes. Good morning. We can hear you. Morning. All right. Morning. Thank you for that. Now that you have informed me that you can hear me, I request everyone to go with you. Okay? Thank you. Today, I shall walk you through what Xavier's brand of online distance learning looks like in terms of content, schedule, grading, learning platforms, and devices to be used. Much of what I will say, you may have already read about in our primer. Nevertheless, this presentation may help address the lingering concerns that you still, I still hear some people who are not muted. Can we request the participants to put the mics on mute? Thank you. Okay. To begin, what is Excel? I will answer by first offering some definition of terms. Let me first describe what online learning and distance learning are, how they are similar and at the same time different. Distance learning is named as such because instruction is delivered from afar. On the other hand, online learning may happen whether or not the teachers are together with their students. A teacher who may be inside the same classroom with his students may ask the students to access the internet to research on a topic. The research work is considered online learning, but is not done from afar. Online learning is used to supplement instruction to make it more engaging and more effective. On the other hand, distance learning is employed usually because there is no option for a physical classroom delivery, and yet instruction must continue. Given this, what is Excel? Excel is the combination of online and this. Sorry, I was muted. Let me repeat that. So Excel will make use of available online tools and resources to deliver and supplement instruction. Thus, it is also online learning. Given this, Excel is an example of online distance learning. At this point, let me also differentiate between homeschooling and Excel. While the learning materials in both homeschooling and Excel are provided to the homes, the delivery of instruction in Excel will be done and is the prime responsibility of the Savior School teachers. However, in the early grades where students cannot read yet or may not have enough self-regulation skills to sit and pay attention to the lesson, the presence and assistance of an adult will be necessary. Here lies the main difference. While the role of the adult in homeschooling is to be the teacher of the student, the adult in Excel will just be the manager of learning. As manager, the adult is needed to ensure that the environment is conducive to learning, that the student is ready for school, and that the student sits through the classes and does the requirements. Excel is not homeschooling. Another set of terms you may need to understand is synchronous and asynchronous. 
Synchronous activities are those that are held at the same time and in the same space by the teachers and the students. When the teacher meets her students in a video conference, both teacher and students are doing the same thing at the same time in the same place. This is an example of a synchronous activity. Asynchronous activities are those that may be done at different times. These may be required activities in relation to an academic subject or a formation goal, or they may be optional activities that students may engage in for leisure and recreation. As you can see, both synchronous and asynchronous activities have their places and purposes within Excel. So how does Excel look like? Predictability brought about by a regular schedule may help build a sense of security among the students during these uncertain times. Note that instead of the seven-day cycle for this school year, we will use a Monday to Friday schedule. Moreover, each day has also been subdivided into learning periods of 30 to 60 minutes long. Recess and lunch breaks have been incorporated into the schedule. Academic subjects have been grouped and assigned into synchronous learning blocks. As you can see from the spread of subjects, we have prioritized literacy, numeracy, and science. These three blocks will also feature topics from social studies and CLE. Chinese and Filipino also have their own blocks, albeit not as many as the other subjects. Computer lessons and digital literacy topics have been embedded in almost every subject. Thus, computer is not assigned its own block. Excel also puts premium on non-academic activities that contribute to character formation. Synchronous blocks have been dedicated to fitness and recreation, peer-to-peer -peer interactions, emotional and mental wellness, as well as spirituality. These are non-negotiables in the Savior School education that commits to the holistic formation of students. The specialists block has been built into the schedule for additional academic assistance in all students. This will be explained in greater detail later. The interest-based classes are optional sessions that students may want to attend for non-academic activities like cooking, origami, discussions on fitness, film reviews, etc. Worth mentioning is the 3 p.m. cutoff for activities that need to be checked by the teacher. Recognizing that activities assigned within the learning blocks may take longer to finish due to internet concerns, etc., students have until 3 p.m. to submit schoolwork. Students who do not submit by 3 p.m. will not be penalized but may miss out on the opportunity to get immediate feedback on their work. Aside from these activities that are built within the school day, what else does Excel offer? A list of asynchronous required and optional activities will also be part of Excel. Required activities like listening to the radio for news in Filipino serve to augment the very limited instruction time in Filipino. Other activities like physical exercise serve to build good habits and contribute to wellness. Compliance with these activities will certainly help in overall character formation, but will not always be checked by the teacher. And so, that this is what an entire week could look like. While the actual scheduling of the subjects into time slots will vary from section to section, the number of periods and minutes 
will be the same. What then happens within a learning block? As you can see, the synchronous learning block may begin with a video conference for the giving of instruction and the initial delivery of a lesson. This could be followed by, by a live chat via Padlet. Misconceptions may be corrected by gathering the student's attention back to a video conference. In the latter part of the block, individual work may be assigned. Given this, the period may end asynchronously in as much as the students may finish this at different times. During the individual working time of students, the teachers may pull out students who have been spotted as needing more help and then have a smaller group discussion with them at this time in a breakout room. Let's now go to grading and assessments. This new set of letter grades will be used to give feedback regarding student performance in individual assessments and in the report card. A more detailed description of each grade is already in the primer. To check how well students understood the concepts and mastered the skills taught, an assessment will be given at the end of each unit. A unit will usually run for one to two weeks. When a student gets a passing score with distinction or just a pass in the assessment, the score is recorded as the grade for the said assessment. When a student shows insufficient evidence of learning or a grade of IE, he is given an extra encounter and is made to retake the same test. It is hoped that with the extra encounter, he will know how to correct the mistakes he got the first time around. If a student gets a P in the retake, the P is recorded as the grade for the said assessment. When a student still gets an IE, he will have to undergo another encounter, after which he will be given a third chance to take the same assessment. The result of the second retake, whether P or IE, will already be recorded. From this procedure, one can already see the amount of support that the school is willing to give to ensure understanding and mastery. The flexibility in waiting for students who do not get the lesson on the first, second, or even third try reflects the school's acknowledgement of the numerous factors that may affect school performance. We recognize that the playing field is not level and as such, the assessment grades may be greatly affected by the amount of adult support and technical resource available to each student. Given this, grades for this year serve more as feedback rather than judgment. The goal of the grades is to guide the teachers as regards how well the lesson has been understood and how much assistance is still needed by the students. The goal of the teacher is to make sure that everyone gets the lessons. Students who get an IE as a trimester grade for a subject will be required to go under additional sessions at the end of the year to enable him to show sufficient evidence of learning in that subject. Once this is done, and evidence is gathered, a final grade of P for the subject may be given. In short, while most students are expected to finish the school year in three terms, struggling students may need four terms to finish the requirements in certain subjects. 
The additional term will be scheduled before the summer break and will not be considered as summer classes. It is simply an extension of the school year, a waiting time for those who need more time. The two assistant principals will talk more about the support that the school will give both students and parents in a while. May we request those who have unmuted to mute their mics again? Thank you. To continue, what gadget will your son need for Excel? For grades 5 and 6, we have identified the iPad to be the device for our usual one-to-one -one program. The grade 6 students are expected to use the iPad that they have been using. Instructions regarding the apps to be used, to be installed, will be given during the orientation week in July. A printer and wired earphones will also be needed. For the incoming batch of grade 5 students, the school will be less strict with the model of the iPad. For as long as the iPad you plan to use can perform all the nine functions, listed on this slide, you may use it for the school year and the succeeding years. <clears throat> the concession is granted only to the incoming grade five batch in consideration of the financial and logistical difficulties the purchase of a new device may bring at this time. All the other lower batches will be required to use the recommended model, whatever that may be, when the time comes. Should you have questions regarding gadgets, please email the computer department. Upon consultation with the different schools and experts, we have decided to use the following as our platform. While Schoology, will be the main channel for the delivery of instruction and submission of requirements in grades five and six, we will still use email as a communication and coordination tool. We are currently studying the different video conferencing apps and will announce the official one for school use before classes begin. How is Savior School preparing for school year 20 to 21. Even under ECQ, the administrators, faculty, and staff have already started preparing for the school year. The curriculum has been audited and trimmed to consider endurance, leverage, and readiness for the next level. This school year, we further subjected the curriculum to a second layer of criteria. We have factored in relevance, time constraint, and the availability of resources as additional conditions that need to be met. This two-step process ensures that our curriculum remains robust despite a shorter school day and despite the new means of delivery. Teacher training sessions are ongoing. The retooling of teachers include sessions on delivering instruction and conducting assessments online. The sessions also include the learning of new skills by the teacher on managing online distance classes in terms of behavior and ensuring student well-being. Also in the works are the revision of policies and procedures to address the new setup, the production of instructional materials, and the conduct 
of parent orientation workshops, among others. <clears throat> Discussions and consultation with experts are also ongoing as regards major changes in the school structures and policies should on-site classes be held at the latter part of the school year. Rest assured that while there are no clear answers yet about the holding of special events like the grade six closing ceremony, these two are being discussed. At this point, I hope that I have been able to address your concerns and help you make a decision that it's best for your son and your family. Recognizing though that what I have presented might not work for you, we offer answers regarding questions about alternatives to enrolling Savior School for this school year. Here are some enrollment questions. <clears throat> for parents of regular students who were enrolled in Savior School for last school year, if you decide to make your son stop schooling for this year, to return to Savior, he will need to take an admissions test. If he passes, he will be readmitted, but he will join the batch that is one year younger than he is. Still for parents of regular students, <clears throat> if you decide not to enroll your son, but to continue schooling elsewhere or via homeschooling, to return, your son needs to take the admissions test for the next level. If he passes, he will be admitted to the same batch that he left. <clears throat> for parents of transferees, if you decide to defer your son's enrollment and to let him stop schooling for this year, to return the the succeeding school year, he will need to take an admissions test for the same level again. If he passes, he may be admitted to join the batch that is one year younger than he is. The reservation fee that you may have already paid will be applied to the next school year. For those who decide to defer enrollment and have their son be homeschooled, and or enrolled in another school for this year instead. Should you still want your son to transfer to Savior after this school year, he will need to go through the same admissions process as he did before. <clears throat> Moreover, the reservation fee will be forfeited. For the accepted transferees who change their mind and decide not to transfer their son to Savior anymore, you may write to the school president to request for a refund of the reservation fee. For those who enroll their sons this May because they are fine with the online distance learning structure for the first trimester, but will not allow their son to physically report to school when the campus physically opens, your son may be dropped from the school register when his physical absences pile up. Given this, he will be considered as not having finished the requirements of the year and will be asked to repeat the same level the year after, here in Xavier or in another school. Note that Xavier School will not offer a parallel online instruction delivery mode for students who will not physically report to school. As a school, we commit to continue delivering quality education and holistic formation that Savior School is known for. More importantly, we commit to prioritizing health and safety as we make important decisions. In return, we ask for your trust, support, and cooperation. Thank you for your attention in listening to this very long presentation.
Thank you, Mrs. Cacacho. Father Aries and Mrs. Cacacho's presentations must have surfaced questions and concerns. Please do not forget to use the chat box to type in your questions. At this point, please welcome the Grade School Assistant Principal for Academics, Mr. Jaya Perez, to further describe how support will be given to the students in Excel. Good morning, parents. Regardless of how much the school has prepared for Excel and how mentally ready the students are for this, it remains uncharted waters for all. Some students may take longer to adjust to the purely online delivery of instruction that we will have in the first trimester. The unpredictability of internet connection, the absence of physical encounter, and the availability of parent support are also factors that may hinder the learning of students. Given this, students will need additional support than usual in their academic work. Therefore, we will be putting in structures that will support students in their learning. As mentioned earlier by Mrs. Cacaccio, breakout discussions may be done by the teacher during a learning block to immediately address learning gaps among students or when misconceptions have been observed in some boys. In line with this, should you observe your son to have difficulty understanding what is being discussed, please encourage him to ask questions through the chat box or to voice his concern. However, we request that parents assume only an observer's role during the class periods. Please do not participate in the class, even to ask questions. You may prompt your sons to ask questions and allow him to be the one to talk to the teacher. There may be instances though, when a quick follow-up within the learning block will not be enough to address the concern of a student who is having difficulty. In situations like this, the said student will be invited to another session after school hours for additional academic assistance. At this point, allow me to explain what the specialist's block is. The specialist block is a dedicated period carved out within each day to give teachers time to extend additional academic assistance to struggling students. This is the special session to which the students observed to have difficulty during class will be invited to. The primary objective of the specialist's block is to ensure that all students get ample academic support and that no student will be left behind in understanding the current lesson. The block is actually composed of small group breakout sessions where students in small groups of five to eight will get additional exercises, listen to more detailed explanations about the lessons, etc. This tutorial type of instruction aims to allow struggling students to catch up. In the process of offering more assistance to those who need it, we also would like the students to feel the care and concern of the teachers for them. The second objective of the specialist block is to develop self-efficacy and a growth mindset in the students. The small group structure can help train the students to voice their questions and try new things with less fear of embarrassment. This safe environment may also help them assume responsibility for their own learning. In other words, well, the main target of the specialist's block is to provide academic support for students and make them feel cared for. The other objective is to impress upon the students the importance of personal effort in achieving academic success, an important component of the growth mindset. So how will this be carried out? Please take time to look at the simple flowchart that shows the steps. During the scheduled block or subject, the teacher will already identify those students who do not get the lesson the first time, either through discussion or through the synchronous activities that the teacher will ask the students to do. The teacher will then take note of these students and will send an invitation to them to attend the specialist's block through video conferencing. At this point, allow me to also discuss with you other matters in relation to the specialist's block. First, 
do only invited students get to join the specialists block? The answer is, although priority will be given to students who need more help, other students who may want to attend as an additional session may actually do so. In cases like this, they can request the teacher to extend the invitation to them. However, please take note, their participation will be limited to simply sitting in. This is to make sure the students originally invited by the teacher will be given more attention. Now, if time will allow and no further questions from the other students are raised, then they may use that chance to talk to the teacher. Second, what kind of subjects will be offered during the specialist's block? Subjects where students have been identified as needing help with will certainly be open. Moreover, the subject teachers who have limited synchronous instruction time with their students will make themselves available during this time for consultation. We will explain the actual procedure during the orientation days in July. To provide support to students whose family situation may make Excel more difficult to implement, we shall also put in place the following practices. Number one, emailing the schedule and materials for the succeeding week every Friday afternoon. This will give the students and the parents ample time to prepare for the next set of lessons. Moreover, the early distribution of requirements will allow students to access and fulfill schoolwork asynchronously at their most convenient time. Number two, recording of synchronous live activities. Some sessions will be recorded and shared with parents to allow you to look back and hold review sessions with your son or to allow those who were not able to attend to know what went on during the session. Parents, we realize that while we may be in the same storm, our boats are different. And as such, we commit to greater flexibility as we work with your sons this school year. Please encourage your sons to take advantage of the support structures that we will put in place to assist them. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Next, we would like to call on Mrs. Joelria Santos Orqueza, the grade school assistant principal for formation, to share the different types of support that will be made available to the parents. Good morning, everyone. I hope that what you have heard so far has assured you that we are serious in our commitment in helping your sons cope in the many challenges this school year. We realize that you, who will be your son's manager of learning, may also need the same support. Given this, please allow me to share with you some of the things that you can expect from us. Mrs. Kakacha mentioned that students will have in their schedule a combination of synchronous and asynchronous activities during Excel. Part of our support is to ensure that the monitoring of the number and the nature of the required activities expected of the students. We commit to carefully planning and organizing them so that your son can still enjoy a balance between school and family life. As you probably know by now, the students will access sport.
resources, lessons, links, and other online tools through Schoology. The selected LMS for grades 5 and 6. Most communication between the teacher and the student will take place in the LMS. May we request everyone to mute their mics, please? Ms. Orquesa, this is uh, Milet Arnedo. Can we just request you to start? Okay, I will repeat Thank you. everything about LMS. As you probably know by now, the students will access courses, materials, announcements, resources, lessons, links, and other online tools through Schoology, the selected LMS for grades 5 and 6. Most communication between the teacher and the student will take place in the LMS. We shall schedule an orientation on the LMS and the different apps that your son will regularly use. We hope to have this orientation prior to the opening of classes in July so that you will be ready to support your son as early as the first day of class. Kindly stand by for the schedule of the orientation. Please note too that the first three days of school will be devoted entirely to orientation sessions as regards routines, the use of apps, expectations regarding behavior, and completion of schoolwork, etc. Your help in making sure that your son follows through on the agreements made during the orientation days will go a long way towards the successful implementation of Excel. Next, given that the new ways of teaching and learning will be challenging, especially at the beginning of the school year, we need feedback to make sure that we are on the right track. In line with this, we will be conducting a bi-weekly survey among parents. We hope that you can help us by sharing your observations as to how your son is responding to the online distance learning environment. We will consider your comments as we plan for the succeeding weeks. This new normal presents great challenges in terms of parenting. Family dynamics may change as parents assume a bigger role in their son's education. Given this, we shall also be organizing support group sessions and or focus group discussions to aid parents with this type of concerns. At this point, I would also like to assure you of our commitment to work with parents. This partnership entails maintaining an open line of communication between the home and the school. Please feel free to email your teachers regarding your concerns or queries. However, we hope that you also understand that record responding back may take a day or two given the teacher's other urgent responsibilities. Parent-teacher video conferences may be scheduled also when desired. Once again, please be reminded of our protocol, and that is to raise your concern initially to the concerned teacher prior to elevating the matter to a school administrator. This protocol is in place so that your concern may be addressed in the most efficient and fastest way. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mrs. Urqueza. Next, you would like to call on Mr. Bogarin, the grades 5 and 6 team leader, to discuss other important grade level concerns. Good morning, parents. Once again, I am Mr. Dindo Bugarin, grade five and six team leader for this school year. 
We hope that everyone is safe and well. We are all looking forward to meeting your sons, albeit online this coming July. We hope that they are as excited as we are to go back to school. At this point, allow me to talk about other essential matters to take note of as your son begins Excel. First, uniform. It is important for students to feel that formal behavior is expected of them as they go online with their classes. We believe that this will help get them into the mindset that the schooling is serious and that he has to behave properly. In line with this, we will require them to dress appropriately during the school day. While we will not require them to use the school uniform, students are required to wear a collared shirt and a decent pair of bottoms, shorts or pants during class hours. To save you from constantly deciding on what your son will wear for the day, we encourage you to already choose from among his clothes. Those widths will serve as his regular Monday to Friday uniform. Wearing the designated shirt per day may help to prepare him for a school mindset. On his scheduled fitness and recreation day, the proper attire consists of his yellow PE shirt or a plain white shirt partnered with a pair of pants or shorts that are suitable for physical activity. For haircut, the barber shop and hair salons are not the safest places these days. Given this, we will not be particular with hair length, but we encourage you to remind your son to keep his hair clean, properly combed, and presentable for his online classes. For his school books and materials needed, the books and supplies that you will order during enrollment will be delivered to you before the opening of classes. Teachers have been instructed to limit their assigned activities to those that will use the things you ordered only. As regards the instructional materials that your son will need, we encourage you to download them immediately upon receipt prior to the actual classes. About learning space at home, find a conducive area in your house that will serve as your son's permanent learning space, which will be used primarily, if not solely, for his studies. He will need a table, chair, and an electrical outlet for charging his gadget. Make sure that the learning space is well lighted, well ventilated, and comfortable enough for him to stay as he attends his online classes and accomplishes his work School materials should also be within reach to avoid waste of time looking for them when needed. As regards to anticipating the changes in the school setup, have a discussion with your son about how the school year will look like. Agree on house rules that you will consistently implement throughout the school year. For example, Set on your rule as regards going to the bathroom during synchronous activities. Agree on the schedule when he will need to accomplish the asynchronous activities. Insist on a bedtime that you will enforce nightly. This matters when settled early. Can spell the difference between a good and a difficult year. It is also important to stress the virtues of responsibility cooperation, independence, and self-discipline. Even as schooling takes place in the home, these virtues have to be practiced faithfully in line with the school work. Lest your son feel that Excel is all work and no play, please assure him of his teacher's support and the presence of activities that cater to interaction among the students. Thank you for listening and we hope to have a good year ahead. We will inform you of the next parent orientation via email. 
the chat loops. Thank you, Mr. Bulgarin. Once again, dear parents, we would like to inform you that we will make a copy of this live session available through a link on the Shaver School website. For easy reference, we will also make we will also make some of the slides available for downloading. We have come to the final part of our orientation. We will now answer the questions posted in the chat box. For our first question, are these schedules final for grades five and six already? Thank you, Ariel. Let me answer that. So the, the table I showed you a while ago, more or less is final in the sense that the time school starts, the time school ends, when recess is, when lunch is, how long the learning blocks are. But like any other regular school year, if we have three or five sections in a particular grade level, the slotting of learning blocks into exact time per subject may be different because this will depend on teacher availability. So I hope that answers that question. Next question. Thank you, Mrs. Cajacho. For the next question, will there still be GEMS classes for this school year? Okay. Because these are extraordinary times, we will not have GEMS or basics classes for this year. So for five and six, no GEMS. Everybody will go through the same curriculum. However, however, note that we do have optional enrichment activities offered as asynchronous activities, which students who may need um, more challenge may want to do, okay? So those are optional activities, but um, we will certainly put them there. Thank you. Okay, cheers. For the next question, will there still be HSK exam for grade six? I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but no HSK for this school year. Do I hear virtual clapping? So no HSK for this school year. Bad news yan, bad news. <laughs> okay, cheers. Will there be additional fee in case a student needs a fourth term? All right. Now, as much as possible, we will schedule the fourth, the additional sessions we, right after the last school day meaning the last online or on-site day, but before summer classes, okay? When that happens, this term four will not incur additional charges, okay? However, in the event, we're not sure of this yet, we're still studying it, in the event that if this needs to um, flow out of the school year into the summer, then additional charges may be necessary. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Cajacho. For the next question, will there be a change in the class size for online distance, distance learning so as to better manage the class participants in terms of increased engagement, maximized interaction, and less technical difficulties to manage? Thank you. We definitely want smaller class sizes for this school year, but the final numbers will depend on the number of our enrollees and the number of our teachers who will be with us during that time. But may I just say, we will exert every effort to decrease the class size from what you have been, your son has been used to, if possible. Because we do recognize that these are challenging times, that online teaching will be different as face-to-face, -face. management of a class will be difficult, will be different, and as such, having a small class size will be very ideal. Thank you. Next, will the school provide us printed handouts instead of us parents who will print it at home since it will incur extra effort for busy parents? As described earlier, all the materials that will be needed will be emailed to you on a Friday afternoon. Some of those will include seat work or worksheets that you will need to print. Um, unfortunately, at this point in time, 
we do not have the resources to ensure delivery every Friday afternoon to make sure you get hard copies. So we feel that in the interest of efficiency and the convenience of the greater majority, we will email to you those materials and yes, you will have to print them out. But especially in grades five and six, where answers or schoolwork may be done on the gadget itself, we will not ask your son, we will not ask you to print out paper anymore. Because I was, I'm imagining that most of the time, for most of our activities, students will be answering on the gadget and as such, submission will be done online seamlessly, no need for printing, no need for scanning and emailing. Thank you. Okay, cheers. The next question, will there be a dry run prior to school opening to make sure everyone can connect and the systems are working by day one? Okay. School day one is uh, officially on July 22, that's a Wednesday. Prior to that, we will already hold the orientation workshops for parents on the LMS and some other school apps. That will already more or less serve as a trial run. The orientation days, which will be from Wednesday to Friday of the first, uh, the first days of the school year, uh, will also serve as the trial run in as much as the days will be spent on orientation only. So official delivery of academic instruction will begin the Monday after. So will there be a trial run? The quick answer is yes, during the orientation days. Thank you. Okay, next question. How do we manage this online mode of learning if we have a grade five plus a younger boy who will be needing to complete who will be needing complete supervision from only one parent? How can we as parents juggle this? Will we be using books while in while on Excel? Okay, thank you for that question. That's an easier question to answer because the example cites an older child and a younger child. We expect our grade five students to be fully independent after the orientation days. Having said that, the parent support will just, especially during the synchronous learning blocks, will just be necessary for the children in the lower grades, so kinder to grade two. All other older boys, we expect them to get more and more independent and self-reliant as the school days go. Um, we for grade five and six parents, we still of course expect you to give reminders from afar. Let's say if you see your son uh, playing when he should be studying, then such reminders have to be given. But we do not expect you to sit closely with your son and listen to the instruction going on. Um, it will require certain a certain amount of sacrifice, juggling, very difficult for parents. But this is the given, this is the new normal. Unless you have one child stop schooling, I really do not have any clear tip or I don't have anything that is foolproof as regards how you can go about this. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Cajacho. For the next question, how will absences due to sickness or challenges with internet connectivity be handled? Okay. This school year, we will be checking attendance only to make sure you are okay or your son is okay. We will not differentiate between excused and unexcused absences. Okay? For the online, for the first trimester, uh, for the online sessions, okay? Realizing that the absence may really be due to a variety of concerns, most of which will be valid. Um, we will not sanction anyone who will not be able to attend a synchronous learning session. However, having said that, note that the more 
activities your son misses, he, there may be learning gaps that will be incurred. However, too, we would like to assure you that all the slides that we will prepare, we will try our best to make them stand alone materials. In, which means that in case you were not able to log on during a class period in the learning block stated in the schedule, you may still access that asynchronously during your most convenient time so that your son can go through the learning process that went on. For, for activities, for Zoom meets or whatever platform we will use, no? but for live chats that we will hold and where the discussion is crucial in the formation of the understanding of a particular concept, we will record those sessions again and make them available uh, for those who were not able to log in real time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jane. So this next question is somewhat related to the previous question. So in case of weather disruption, such as heavy typhoon and, and, and unreliable internet connection, will online classes continue despite the weather condition? At this point, um, we're not very sure yet. But let me just share with you because we also had such a concern during the typhoon uh, last week and we were having our uh, training for teachers. We wanted to check if internet connection will still be good despite the strong rains and wind. Um, so we will be ready with an answer for that once we study the situation a bit more. But let me just say that the usual, the usual procedure we have about automatic cancellation of classes may not push through this year. But as I said, we will study the matter a little bit more and then tell you about it uh, later on prior to the beginning of the school year. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Cajacho. Next, can parents be given the lesson in advance for the week so that we can let, they can let their, their sons work on them when they are available? As mentioned, we will email on a Friday afternoon that buys you two, and two days lead time to get your things ready. Now, one thing we have given up during Excel, for Excel, is the novelty of presenting the lesson ourselves to your sons. Why? Because you have access to, the, to next week's material early on. We feel that efficiency and convenience takes precedence over novelty during this time. Thank you. For the next question, this is regarding grade 6 students, I think, or it involves grade 6 students. Will there still be an HSEE and will there be a review for it? Thank you. We've never conducted any review for the HSEE except for a dry run. And I think maybe a mock test, that's all, okay? So an admissions test will still be fielded to the grade 6 students. Um, to ensure that whoever will be accepted to the high school is sufficiently ready for the demands of high school. Um, we can certainly continue with a mock exam in whatever form. We will let you know about it next time. But to answer the question again, in case some of you missed it, yes, there will be an admissions test uh, for grade 6 students for their entry to high school. Thank you. Um, the next question is regarding the sectioning of the boys. So will, there, will they retain their previous sections or will they be reshuffled for grades five and six? I'm afraid we cannot have a clear answer to that because that will depend a lot on the result of our enrollment. Thank you. Um, finally, the, um, are we expecting weekly workload to be, sim to be similar to DLM given last year? 
the DLM load last year was too much and not realistic for working parents. Thank you very much for allowing me to address that concern. When we crafted the DLMs um, for the SEA Games uh, break, we were only expecting to be out, we only expected the students to be out from school for a short period of time. And during that time, we expected the parents to help with the instruction, with the teaching of their sons, okay? And as such, the DLMs were had links, hopefully were self-explanatory, okay? But did not take into consideration too much um, what the other subjects were doing because they were designed independently, okay? One, the subject teachers did their work independently. The good thing about Excel is that, as Mrs. Orquesa uh, mentioned a while ago, one of our commitments to you is to make sure that we will monitor the amount of school work that the children will have to do synchronously and asynchronously, okay? So having said that, um, we, we do not expect comments that the amount of work for a week will prove overwhelming to students, okay? Also, unlike in the DLM, when there was very little interaction between the teachers and the parents and the, or the teachers with the students, here in Excel, the teachers will be very much in coordination with their students, okay? Because instruction will come from them, answers to questions, clarifications about the lesson will be answered, done by them too, okay? So I think those are the two main differences between Excel and DLM. So those who have fears about Excel being very similar to DLM, please be assured it's not the same. Thank you. Um, a while ago, a while ago, may I just segue to, uh, I, I was muted for a time when gadgets were being discussed. So may I invite Mrs. Jessica De Mejilio to just go over the device requirements for grades five and six. Mrs. De Mejilio. Thank you, Ms. Jane. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'll just go through the same things that Ms. Jane mentioned, although some were muted. So for grades five to six, we have identifi identified the iPad to be the device for our usual one-to-one -one program. So the grade six students are expected to use the iPad that they have been using in grade five. Instructions regarding the apps to be installed will be given during the orientation week in July. For the incoming grade five students, as mentioned, the school will be less strict with the model of the iPad. For as long as the iPad you plan to use can perform all the nine functions listed on the slide that was shown a while ago and on the primer, you may use it for the school year and the succeeding school years. For specific questions, you may email us so that we, I'll put it in the chat box so that um, we can answer your specific device or gadget questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mrs. De Mejilio. Thank you, Mrs. De Mejilio. For concerns raised today that were not included in the primer, and for the other questions we have not been able to address given time constraints, we shall compile them into an FAQ that we will make available on the Save Your School website. As mentioned earlier, the recording of today's session will also be made available at the Save Your School website. We thank you for your attendance in today's parents' orientation, and we hope you found it helpful, and we pray that, the, that with the information you have received for today, you'll be able to make the best decision for your son's education this school year. Stay safe and Lucia looks.